More now on Brazil's presidential election and how it may impact the country's booming economy. Walter Maciel Neto is managing partner of Quest Investimentos in Brazil. He joins us live from Sao Paulo this morning. Uh, Walter, thanks for making time. Uh, you know, up until just yesterday, it seemed like uh, Dilma Rousseff, it was just presumed she was going to win this election uh, by a landslide, it seemed. And then now you've got this runoff at the end of the month. Are you prepared for real volatility in the markets? Um, I don't think so. Um, of course, the, the, the results was unexpected, especially because uh, exit polls yesterday still pointed to um, elections, um, um, you know, being um, um, uh, a clear, the clear result on the first round. But um, I believe that uh, both candidates now for the second round um, present uh, very similar economic platforms, and I don't believe that uh, the second round should cause um, uh, any volatility in the markets. Okay, so that 46 percent support level, really, you're, you're saying it's not too much of a worry that it wasn't a more clear majority. But give me a sense here. I mean, Brazil's the, the biggest economy in Latin America. Uh, President Lula is, is credited or claims that he helped bring, what, 21 million people out of poverty during his time in office. Is the future of Brazil in the commodity space or is it about the Brazilian consumer himself? Well, I think it's a mix. Um, first of all, I'd like to highlight that we believe that um, uh, the, the big secret for, uh, it's not a secret anymore, but the big uh, issue for Brazil's success is the continuance of the same economic policy for the last uh, 16 years. Uh, President Cardoso has laid down uh, the reforms for the Brazilian economy and some um, today benchmarks for the Brazilian society as keeping inflation under control, uh, floating currency, um, having a target for inflation, primary fiscal surplus. Uh, President Lula has uh, continued this economic policy and has um, um, increased its effects uh, through um, uh, raising purchase power, minimum wage, and of course, there's together with all that uh, China's effects on, on, on Brazil's uh, trading terms, which has um, allowed Brazil to accumulate reserves. So after all that, I believe that um, uh, all, all those values and uh, the economic policy are something that the Brazilian society uh, appreciates. And I believe that those are uh, landmarks that uh, uh, whoever is the, the next president will not yeah. change. Well, you're an investor here, so I know you're going to be hedging against whatever risk you might be seeing here. What is it that has you worried? Well, what, what we worry today is, is imbalances in, in the economy, especially between uh, tradables and non-tradables. Uh, we see already a lot of inflation uh, in, in non-tradables. And on the other hand, tradables and uh, the opening of the Brazilian economy through imports um, have created conditions for uh, the inflation uh, to remain uh, in the target. Looking ahead, those imbalances um, and, and bottlenecks in infrastructure mm -hmm. and um, on, um, we, we believe that there's no okay. excess supply today on, on um, labor force uh, will we'll, uh, present the big challenges for uh, uh, the next government. All right, Walter, thank you for making time. I appreciate it.